Jasmine Bowen and welcome to Remix TV. You are watching The Elephant in the Room and on today's episode we have some very special guests. We have quite a large panel as you can see. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys, click on our contest banner, enter your friends, enter yourself and you have a chance to win $500 just for entering your friends on Remix TV and telling them about all the great videos you watch. I know you do that anyway. Hey, I saw a great video today. Why not get paid to do it? Click on the contest banner. Hurry, the contest ends soon. So, today on Remix TV, we have five lovely young Canadian actors who are trying to make it in the industry. They say that the acting industry is one of the toughest to make it in. And we wonder how can that be true when you see hundreds of Hollywood stars who are famous for nothing making making thousands upon thousands of dollars. These actors are here to tell us that it's true. So, welcome guys, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for, hey, thanks for having us. Now, um, I'm gonna throw a general question out there to you guys. Um, kind of give us a little bit about your background and tell us why you wanted to get into the industry. Well, I'm from Kuwait. Mm -hmm. I just moved here a year ago. Uh, I am Canadian, but I grew up in Kuwait. And um, when I first came across theater and drama, I was about 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I had just moved to schools that had a drama class. Mm -hmm. And at first it was just drama, a fun class. And mm -hmm. as I grew older, it got more serious and decided to move somewhere where it was more appreciated. So I did it. And All right. Here, I am. here you are in the biggest city in Canada, in Toronto, Hollywood <laughs> North. <Yep. laughs> All right, and Sandra? Well, currently um, I started off doing modeling, so I'm still doing that. I'm mainly a freelance model, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, looks aren't going to last forever, yeah. so <laughs> I sort of want to pick up another skill set, and mm -hmm. so I'm starting to audition for more um, acting roles. Okay. And Vince? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, why do I want to do acting? I don't know, it's just something... I enjoyed doing when I was younger, mm -hmm. you know, playing around with my friends and whatnot. It was like acting, so I um, had a lot of fun doing that. And then theater came along, UFT came along, mm -hmm. and now transitioning into film for the past th three years. So it's not too shabby. It's all, all right. It's all good. All right, pass that microphone along. Now, Scott, I know you have a little bit of a different story. I know that you have since left the industry. I have. Uh, originally, when I started to get into it, uh, I kept running into the barrier saying, you're not experienced enough, you don't have life experience, you're too young. And from that, I took the biggest, most drastic step that I could. Mm -hmm. I actually joined the military. I, I served overseas. And from that, I've gotten as much life experience that can be had. Uh, to many degrees because now I've actually experienced what a war scene would be. Mm -hmm. You can't really say, oh, you don't really know what being shot at is. Like, <laughs> well, now you do. Shooting at at someone. So that's kind of how my story began. All right, and Jordan? Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> um, basically, I started off uh, in elementary school, as a lot of people do. You just go through school and then uh, transit into high school and you kept doing that. So I was like, okay, I'll go. and go to, you know, post-secondary four, and that's why I did that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I did it, I guess, because uh, it's something I enjoy. And honestly, I'm not in it for the money, because I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's just, that's how it happens. Like, I mean, if you're saying I want to be in it just to go to L.A. and, you know, make blockbuster movies, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. What are the right reasons? Um, it's just something that you have to do um, instantly. Like, some people are like, Excuse me. Some teachers they'll be like, "Oh, you have a great outlet. Go do theater." Uh -huh. uh, they'll like, "Oh, okay." They'll have an idea of like, "I want to go to Hollywood," so I'll just use actually a fun yeah. talent or I'm a serious person. Uh -huh. But they do it without you know going to uh, community theater or anything like that to get the experience to really see if they mm -hmm. actually like it. And I think if you actually have a passion for this business, then you'll do it regardless and do it for free, like probably the five of us that are doing it. Yeah. All right now. I know that there's a lot of hurdles out there in the industry, so this is open general question. You don't have to go in order, but what is one of the biggest hurdles you guys have experienced? Uh, for me, it would have been uh, just where I was location-wise. Being in Ottawa, it was mm -hmm. quite difficult. Um, also, that it, the industry is not as prevalent as it is out here. Uh, for me, 
the life experience that's uh -huh. where I kind of hit the biggest hurdle right. they would always say oh you're not experienced in comedy enough or you don't have experience in this or that so from there I, I very much have had to expand on mm -hmm. my horizons all right what definitely else? I agree um, the location where you're at and that's why yeah. I moved to Toronto mm -hmm. um, in Kuwait there was just barely anywhere I could do theater it was just either in school or in university and that was it there was nothing outside of that mm -hmm. so um, there's a lot more opportunity here it's still really difficult mm -hmm. uh, I would also say money is a big issue mm -hmm. it's hard to keep a job that will pay the bills and be able to find time to act that's another problem yeah. <laughs> what else is there anything yet there's with hurdles wise there's a lot that uh, that I've experienced with there's certain things such as obviously a lot of us touched on like you know experiencing this sort of character or this sort of you're basically typecasted sometimes okay you're typecasted sometimes right. your typecast is like yeah I usually get the funny guy okay I have no problem with it whatever fair enough but you also want to try out to do something else to show yourself to show what skills you have and sometimes people don't want to take that chance with it and they're just like yeah you know what uh, you're not good for it yeah, that's, not, that's like one of the things I've experienced second one would be you find sometimes you get sketchy people oh <laughs> you sometimes run into sketchy you guys people. are all laughing yeah. have you seen the sketchy people <laughs> they're just they seem they're basically good sellers is what it is because we know in the, in the industry there was you know some agencies are very untrustworthy and also that goes along with productions too mm -hmm. some people are just i don't know it's like they're sort of like con men almost mm. in a way right it's like they're I don't know, you just really can't, almost in a sense, trust some people yeah. we work with. You know, they promise you something and then you'll fall through on it. Yeah. And it's kind of heart-wrenching because, you know, you put your time and effort into it and certain things such as, like, payments. Mm -hmm. You know, if they say, oh, you're going to get paid X amount of dollars and you don't even see a penny of it, it's like, wow, you know. No, Vince, I know you have a specific experience with that and you don't have to name names, but can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I was um, doing a horror movie about a year ago and uh ran into this very interesting european guy and uh he was just he was like a good talker mm -hmm. you know he promised us a whole bunch of things so on and so forth and basically he got a lot of he got a lot of funding funding you know <laughs> i don't know if it was like the entire money or monopoly money whatever <laughs> but he apparently had a lot of funding and he said, you know, this is what we're getting for the production, so on and so forth. I'm like, all right, cool, you know. So I was on board with it, and um, we went away, where was it, like, Belleville. Went away to Belleville, and we were filming, and that's sort of when things hit the fan. And uh, it got interesting, to say the least, and um, he said he had a distributor, so on and so forth, but he wouldn't tell us who or what it was just very sketchy <laughs> it was so bad like it was like a movie in itself like, <laughs> it, it was it, a it, horror movie it, in itself it was, it was a movie in itself because it came to a point where the director the guy who was running it he almost pitted like the crew against the director and us actors were in the middle of it so like the director would want certain things but the cat uh, the crew would want certain things and the crew would try to pull us on their side try, try to pull us on their side we're like listen we just want this thing resolved that's and did it you, did you ever get paid no <laughs> so you're pointing to the end of that, <laughs> that story. Like, yeah, no no so one of, one of the hurdles of the acting industry is actually not making the money that you were promised or not making any money at all you're watching the elephant in the room on remake tv and we will be right back take a short break get a drink go walk your dog and check out the second part of this video